yeah, we'll start with acknowledgement stuff the right way. So um, I'd like to acknowledge that we're on Wurundjeri Country today. Our office is on Wurundjeri Country and we're presenting a site that's on Wurundjeri Country. And yeah, as architects, we have a particular role to try and solve for that because we build on stolen country. And yeah, we didn't solve it in any particular way here, you know. We, um, we had kind of an opening ceremony with uh, Wurundjeri people in language, you know, on this site. Um, there's some, you know, there's acknowledgement to country on site, but you know, apart from that, there was nothing significantly, and there was a smoking ceremony with the building opened. But, you know, I'd love to say that we did more, but we didn't, so, sorry. Um, so I'll just give you some background on four pillars. So it started with these three guys and their three uh, quiet partners. Um, within 10 years, they kind of, you know, built the best gin brand in the world. From, just from craft out of this tiny little place in Hillsville. Um, and it was actually uh, Cam's partner, Leah, that came and spoke to us. So there were, you know, there were three different architects that were you know, engaged in the kind of, I guess, competition process to win this project. And one of the things we talked to them about was you know, how they wanted to see themselves as kind of you know, global citizens, given that they were being approached by a line agent to buy their brand. Like, and, and they knew that once that happened, you know, that would be would be part of a big, you know, alcohol conglomerate. <laughs> um, and so there was an opportunity for them to kind of draw a line in the sand about where they wanted to be seen as part of that. When we were first spoke to them, they were producing 600,000 uh, bottles of gin a year and they wanted to increase that capacity uh, to a million bottles of gin and they couldn't do it in their current facility in Hillsville. The site that they were in, interestingly, in Hillsville is called by the Yarra Rangers uh, a tourist gateway. And this is what it looks like largely. Uh, it's the thirsty camel there. There was a mechanic next door and a petrol station behind them. So that's four, four pillars on the corner of Marinda Highway there. You know, Probably old. only called a tourist gateway because so many people visit four pillars. Yeah, literally, literally you drive past on a Mar Marinda Highway on the way in. So it's actually a pretty important um, place, but it just wasn't you know delivering on that kind of strategic uh, colour on the map. Um, so Four Pillars bought the um, kind of the mechanic next door. So that's their old shed behind there. And you can see the Boston Ivy kind of growing on it in the background there. And they were literally operating out of that old warehouse with Boston Ivy on it and some signage. Um, but it was pretty simple. We want to talk you through how um, sustainability was in, in, entwined in the entire design process and how that worked and why it works like that. So I think let's get back to basics about how is gin made. You start with the base spirit, ethanol. Under heat and pressure, you, you, you introduce other things. Like, and in Stu's you know, and Cam's experience, they use Australian botanicals, a lot of Australian botanicals, to infuse that. And sometimes then, Christmas pudding. Sometimes <laughs> Christmas pudding. Um, yeah, that's right. And then at the back end of it, uh, the gin comes out and it's transformed. It's not ethanol anymore. It's this incredible kind of, you know, you know, ex experiential drink. We wanted to take the visitors through the same thing at Four Pillars. So put them through a vessel, you know, expose them to, you know, uh, compression. Well, sensory experiences. So, you know, it, it starts with, you know, smell and, and, but it, you know, goes through taste and the tactility of the space as well. And ideally they would come out transformed. And of course, we also wanted to use that as an opportunity to take our client on a journey of how to be great corporate citizens, but also on their visitors on a journey of how to be, how you, how you can experience something in a commercial world and it can still be sustainable. And so what's that journey look like? So firstly, you arrive at, I mean, you know, we've shown half of the old warehouse there or the old gin distillery here on, on the right, and then the new, um, facility is on the left. We've got this kind of one unifying idea, which is the Copper Vale, which is 1.6 kilometres of copper, which runs across the entire facade, kind of tying those two things together. And why is that important? Is because it's not a fence. It pumps about 80,000 litres of water through it a day. And so water when- Water couldn't go into stormwater at, it, at the heat it comes out of the distilling process. Yeah, so basically what this does is it's a heat exchanger. It cools the water dumped from the stills, so they go through this kind of tri-river, tri we call it, and then it gets pumped through here. When it comes about at the back end, it's cool and it gets to be reused again. It doesn't have to go in a holding tank, which sits at the wrong temperature, which then has to be discharged into wastewater. 
So it saves all the um, energy of, a, uh, of an electric aviator to cool it, like a cooling tower, and it saves all the water pumping it out to wastewater. And then, and you get to experience that. So in winter, that copper veil is warm. It feels like a radiator. Mm. Uh, as you walk through, the next thing that you notice is, again, winter's the best time to go here because when you dump the stills first, it dumps under this kind of what we call the Chai River. This is, this is before we'd finished the building. This was, you know, basically they used to just dump it through a stormwater grave. But now, um, as you walk through, every hour when they dump the stills before it gets pumped through the grill, uh, this steam comes up, smelling of juniper uh, and botanicals. And so you get this kind of moment of sensory experience on the way through before it gets pumped through um, that pipe at the front. We use the existing building, so we didn't change a lot of the existing building. So you come in, uh, that's the tasting area, but you also get to see the old copper stills in there. So there's a, you know, and we left a lot of that as it was for a number of reasons. And then we bring you through a moment of compression, a moment of quiet. So this is kind of, you know, designed to be acoustically quiet as you come from the big noisy production area into the new area, okay? And then you step through into the hospitality area. The hospitality area is all made in copper, same as the stills are made out of, and it's made from cut copper pipes. So all that fluting is not something special, it's just a cut copper pipe. And obviously, it's circular at the end of this. It's all uncoated and recyclable. There's a view into the production window. So you can see the bottling line down there, and you can see the tanks where the gin comes from, from the distilleries. And then, why is, and then there's a gin garden out there which has botanicals and plants there, and you sit out there as this big kind of extension of the hospitality area. And we don't, the botanicals that are going into the gin. Yeah, so there's some, some local plantings in there, but it doesn't need to be heated or cool. Um, and then that sits in the canopies of the trees. It's a connection to landscape. But, um, and then obviously it's still commercial, so you exit through the gift shop. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, we used uh, a lot of low carbon materials. The concrete has uh, a high percentage of recycled content. It was the first time that Hanson had ever put recycled content into shot creek. Boring, but they'd never used recycled content in their shot creek for basements. And we just worked on them. And, and in fact, our builders never stopped. We were relentless with them until they finally agreed to do it. And as it turns out, now they do it all the time. We doubled the visitors. So there's now 200,000 visitors a year, not 100,000. We've increased their bottling from 600,000 bottles to a million bottles a year. It's carbon neutral in operation, so all of stage two is 100% electric. There's 100 kilowatts of solar on the roof. And in fact, four pillars after this then took their entire organisation carbon neutral. Um, the gin pipes up there take uh, the, the gin from the bottling line directly into the bar, and it saves 29 tonnes of glass per year. And we are on time. Yeah, but okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. I'll just um, I'll just flick through the rest of the slides.